pioneers, but we weren't scared. We knew that no matter what happened, mother and father would always keep us safe. Check Alpha, Beta, Omega. What's going on? Check, check. Let us know in the chat how we sound. What's going on? Episode Club, Mackenzie Burns, Bruce T. Moore, everybody that will be watching in the future. I'm here with a Johnny B. Crazy, a.k.a. House of the Conqueror, a.k.a. part of the Top Shelf Fandom uh, team and, and uh, executive script editor and script writer that will be going over his script for the finale in which we've had to kind of do this. Not had to, but I wanted to do a a live stream because I just kind of wanted to close the case on this season all in all and talk about maybe predictions for season two because Guskowski, Aaron Guskowski, the writer, the creator, the showrunner of this series came out and he, he did a series of interviews and I'd like to invite him on this series as well. You're, you're more than welcome to come on because you went on channels that have less viewers than me. Uh, and I actually admire that, but I also think there's something to be said for, let's say having to explain a story so much, but also you were ass. You didn't go on a Westworld season two media scrum, um, you know, voyage in which, you know, uh, Nolan and joy did. So there's no shame in it, but there has been a lot exposed and a lot that we should talk about in effect to what you wrote brilliantly, Johnny about the season finale. First off, introduce yourself and uh, we'll, we'll get into it. Well, yes, I'm Johnny from House of the Conqueror, uh, a fantastic YouTube channel that you should go check out that one day will not be dormant. Um, now I'm taking a little break from that, but uh, happy to be working with Top Shelf Fandom, and uh, it's it's been really fun. Uh, this show in and of itself has been really good up until a point. I don't, you know, uh, Guzkowski. It may have shared a little too much. Um, we are down to talk about it. I think that's kind of why we're here. Um, we did get set up, set up really well, in my opinion, for the characters for season two. So I think there's a lot of good cinema still to be had with this. But uh, how much he hurts himself in the long run, you know, we're going to take an objective look at that. Um, not shitting on anyone, but we're just, you know. Being real. Stories take nuance. <laughs> Being real. He was asked questions. He answered them. And there's some few very enlightening things that he said. I think that there's certain aspects that he still did not stick. And I think that this is definitely a two season to three to possibly five season series. But definitely you could not leave this series where you left it. And they knew that they were going to get a season two. I don't know how early on they knew that. That was one of the things not discussed. In these interviews, he's currently writing or at least plotting out season two in which he has brought up. We'll play a little bit of that interview. But a lot of uh, what I want to talk about is some of the great things that Johnny uh, brought up in, in, in the script that wrote uh, that you wrote uh, initially. This was uh, you started writing this before the finale. You finished it after the finale. It's still applicable. And the big change that I, I just want to make is that I really like the way the show has gone as far as belief. Goes because I think that the show is ultimately asking, what does belief mean? What does it mean to believe in something, both good and bad? What are the pros and cons to a belief other than yourself or other than the tangible, feasible, you know, things you can reach out and grab and see and have scientific, per se, proof of? And I think he does a very good job of that. But what Johnny did so brilliantly in this script is he went over all the plot points. And he went over and he found real mythology to tie to the, the serpent other than Adam and Eve, uh, which is quite brilliant. We're going to talk about it. Uh, do you want to take the first shot at how to say I got it in the initial recording? Because I did record the voiceover for this, but it was Kool Khan. Uh, yeah, Kukul Khan. Yeah, it, it's like Kukul Khan. <laughs> that sounds good. It's like Kukul Kuk Khan. Um, and it is a Mayan belief system in which there is a flying serpent. So I think what's important to take note of is that the applicable mythologies and spiritualities in which 
actually apply to this are not for nothing, but they're also probably in the grand scheme of things, not something to go off of for plot points. If you're looking for one of those basic based explained videos where they go over arbitrary points that somebody on Facebook say earlier, so many experts on this series, who to go to. And I think that's a, a very good question. I would say, like I said in my response, I don't consider myself to be an expert in this story specifically or any story specifically. I study story structure, critical analysis, literary analysis, story theory, and so forth. And so does Johnny. And we adhere to the basic themes and arcs and character progression of story. So we don't tend to get caught up in too many of the arbitrary abstract aspects of story, meaning we notice there's something in the background like Easter eggs. Those are fun and there's nothing to take away from that. That's not what Top Shelf Fandom has done. It's not what it will do in the future. I brought on somebody like Johnny to write for the channel because I know that he looks at story in an intelligent way and he'll have a more cohesive let's just face it, more brevity filled script uh, that isn't as much, uh, you know, wow. go, yeah, it, it, rambling on, you know, because I can be long uh, winded per se, but yeah, everybody needs a creative team. And I've always believed in that. I work with other channels as a producer, obviously we all have a strong suit. So yeah, you, if you want to go and hear about somebody's take on a religion, that's actually a thing and they ignore that, go ahead. If you want to go and look at a globe and think the topography is different, Go ahead and look at that. That will mean nothing in the long run. We will try to give you the bigger yeah. pictures of it, right? Um, and I think you catch it here because it's still important. Yeah, and I mean, even when we make the connects, like the Kukulkan or the plumed serpent, the feathered serpent, which is really cool in general, uh, you also have dragons, uh, uh, these flying snakes in the air, so to speak. Um, and not all dragons look like Game of Thrones. A lot of them don't have wings and they fly magically. So that's kind of what we got here. But in every story, you can find at the bare minimum broad strokes from myths throughout time. Because that's the basis for every story we have here. Just the myths and legends that uh, the cavemen told around the campfires all the way up until we could write and create stories ourselves and add upon this, this lore. Because the lore we have God, I don't know why I'm making this point, but the lore we have is as old as humanity. And when you think about it like that and think about how we build on story throughout our whole human existence, it's a really special thing. And that's, what, that's why I enjoy looking at the story because these stories one day may turn into myths. We may have an apocalypse and a new religion may start from uh, Lost, you know, hey, the good. script from Lost. You know, there, there could be some crazy stuff going on here. Uh, maybe Kevin Costner was starting a, a movie about it. Yeah, well, he's Make more interested in the future of the post system. Uh, but no, that's a yeah. uh, the beginning to the science of story, which I have recommended many times on this channel, is that we will all die in with, within heat, you know, heat death, and that everything is it's this existential crisis, per se. You know, this the existential dread. But we tend yeah. and we decide to tell stories anyways about why we're here stories drive us even though heat death and planet getting sucked into a black hole and the sun becoming some sort of a you know like black hole or whatever it is uh and burning us all alive blah 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 everything will end and the universe isn't it's all that important giant, yeah I think. yeah red yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this isn't a science channel don't go here for that the point is everything is meaningless uh you know except for the meaning which we give the light, which is abstract, obscure, but it's also meaningful to me. I, I find that to be very uh, inspiring. And I think that we tell ourselves stories, uh, not meaning they're fictional per se or meaningless. I, I find there to be meaning in something that, that looks at that existential dread and says, we carry on and we won't go so gently. We will rage. We will rage per se. So I don't think it'll poetic about it. So you, we, we talk about these uh, mythological connections and the, if the psychic space serpents are jumping the shark, because I think that's the big hinging point. And we talked about it in our last stream about the story is did it jump the shark? Because what we have is a lot of static story threads. If you actually look at it objectively, what we have is we have space Ragnar, we have Sue, we have Paul and we have Campion and we have mother and we have father. In the end, what we learn is nobody knows anything, Jon Snow, right? Nobody knows anything. Everything is flipped on its head. That is actually meaningful. But that can seem somewhat non-conclusive, a lack of resolution, finality per se, right? For a Zergo, rightfully so. Guzgowski may do these. I don't pretend to know his character motivations. 
Uh, but he is doing a lot of interviews and giving a lot of reasons and in shining some light on things and in letting us know that there is more of an abstract, wider, broader view of belief in which he is embracing for this story. Meaning he is looking at the actual relativity and relevance of belief in general. Right, Johnny? Like he's not like sticking. He said soul could be in his words. I'm paraphrasing. Soul could be the belief in Aaron. Right. For for all he cares. Yeah, the yeah the belief in yourself, the belief in something greater, uh, something that pushes you and motivates you throughout your life. Uh, like you said, with our own mortality, uh, comes uh, a lot of questions we have to ask ourselves. And uh, how do you get through life with keeping yourself sane? Well, you know, Saul ain't down for the same. You know, this is something we were talking about earlier. It, it goes into faith. Uh, you know, when can faith hurt you? When does faith help you? Uh, when does lack of faith like work out in your favor? But also, as we've seen with Saul, weaponized faith, um, yes. which we're having here um, from Otho to to Caleb to this. This is using faith uh, for a bad thing. It's manipulating these people. And it, and it sh- you just get to see every aspect of faith. That's probably the, one of the strongest things about this show and what i actually do really like about it so yeah i'd agree with you justin well absolutely like so what we get here and i want to say what's up to dante uh thank you so much for i've enjoyed your uh uh lives uh your i i believe you mean live streams but uh if you take it as our lives as well i've I've tried to enjoy my life uh for the uh raised by wolves uh very good and intelligent dialect thank you so much we try to be objective about it we try to be real about it we try not to make something out of nothing but i think there is something to be said for Somebody that is going to write a script like this, Guzkowski, that's going to tie in with Prometheus, so we'll talk about this a little bit, he's going to be inspired by Ridley Scott, right? And there's going to be lots of inspirations, there's going to be lots of uh, Easter eggs, tie-ins, hints, winks, nods, all of this. But at the same time, you're never going to get a finite answer to the meaning of life, which some of these answers or questions would, you know, maybe require an answer of, well, is there a God, whether it's soul you know, a Christian God, blah, 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 Muslim, but it doesn't matter. You're never going to get that. What does it mean to be human? Yes. This this is a big question (laughs) asked too, with the the de-evolution, which we'll get into, but de-evolution with mother and the androids, the personality, which you're always going to get with Ridley Scott. And I think Ridley Scott's son's actually working on this now, and he's trying to make a name for himself. I think he was part of the design of the actual creature at the end, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that. Got to look it up real quick, but um you know his son's possibly trying to make a name for himself and you got there's a lot of nods to prometheus but it's not in the world but i think you know they're given credit where credit is due because this is definitely a ridley scott inspired story ridley scott inspired cinematography and uh you know the way ridley scott you know lets his actors just be free they they did that with this show as well you know they build the world they build the mythos and then the actors just get to kind of build the characters for themselves. And I think it, it, it lets you see in a lot of places that they, they really shine here. And there's a couple of things we do got to talk about with the acting, uh, mainly Paul, <laughs> but uh, I'll, we'll get into that when you want to, Justin. Well, absolutely. Um, I think that the but, arcs yeah. are something that we'll get into as well. I like what you said, because what we want to touch on here is what we expect for season two and what we can expect out of what we've had, meaning what we should take, not expect out of season one. And Johnny had some brilliant, um, you know, Mayan connections to a flying serpent of sorts in which we still have like, like as of last month videos of outside of a temple. But I think that it is a more of an overarching belief in general in the benefits and the cons, meaning the pros and cons of beliefs. It's not crappy on beliefs. But it's also never going, it's like much like the leftovers, much like a lot of these uh, stories that deal with these deeper issues is they, they, they should give you these, these answers for a few minor questions to ask within the season's arcs, which I do believe raised by wolves in all fairness, looked in it objectively that they did fail it. Uh, they gave us a lot of setups for a lot of arcs and they gave us a whole big question mark at the end, which is good, but there is a sense of completion, which is lacking. 
So what we're looking no at resolution, is resolution, right? Yes. For any of our characters, there's no resolution. No, no, there isn't. Now I get why, and that's what we're going to get into. And Guzkowski has been very um, informative, and in, he has enlightened us per se in these interviews that he's given. And I would welcome him to come on this channel at any time, since he seemingly will go on any channel. Um, and that's not a knock. I, I give him one well, no, bravo for recognizing the power within this medium. That's not a knock whatsoever. But one of the main things that he says is that when we're looking at the snake creature that comes, uh, the Kula Khan, as, as we related it to within the actual mythos. Johnny, would you be okay with us just making that widely for everybody, that script, so they could they could look into it and we could link it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll link you the, the do it or you got it. I got it. No, I just wanted to make sure since okay. you were the writer. Yeah, so Johnny made some very cool uh connections within mythology because that's what the show has done so far. I think a lot of people have looked at mythicism and the mythraic as this obscure, abstract, fictional creation just for this that is not true. This is a belief system that has went from everywhere from the Greeks to the, uh, I think, pits, you know, like there's Scottish belief in this, there's Roman belief in this, and there's a sun god that has always been prevalent within belief systems. So there's mythology that ties to it. And I think what Aaron Guskowski wants us to do is look at how we believe in something more than ourselves or better or worse and how that affects us within the story and how it can drive you. And what we have there in the story, and one of the major insights that I've gotten, and the reason we're doing this stream, is that he said something very intriguing to me. Something that really made me just say, we can't do this script, not because it's not worth anything or not not, not uh, even applicable. It's very applicable because we need to put an, abstract, uh, an asterisk on this, right? We need to say, he said that soul is still something even though we can view it as a belief system of our choice meaning he said he could believe it in a belief in itself he still is going with there is certain things that certain characters only know because i'm calling it a priest in a box trope and hoping it catches on for trope tv meaning they are confessing to soul meaning marcus slash caleb slash Phaser Agnar is confessing the soul. Otho is confessing the soul. And this is this medium in which it's either an artificial, artificial intelligence, which is likely or some sort of a omniscient being to some extent, regardless. But it needs these AI and it needs these people and it has to tap into them. And it's choosing, you know, false prophets, uh, I guess you would probably accurately say, to get information to feed Paul because the big tell is that Paul is only aware of something that Caleb and Sue were aware of, meaning Sue that was not his actual mother, right? So he's using them as a surrogate. Yeah. So there is this third-party antagonist in which has been injected into our story that we will never get the answer to what is the true belief and how did everything get created and you know how did mankind spawn into this or blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. But we have an antagonist here that will not most yeah. likely form as a snake, right, Johnny? But it, it has presented itself no. as one that's listening. Do you want to go from here? Because that's very telling to me. Well, yes. Uh, if you expect to get any kind of question for actual God, uh that's not going to happen but saw in and of itself uh there has to be something to it uh where did the mithraic mysteries originate and kind of going back a little bit you know mithraicism they were really big on the stars i think mithras was is what actually holds the universe together then you have saul and also luna it'd be interesting to see if we do get some representation for luna next season which is the moon goddess um it just opposes the sun kind of um, but we can get in that another time. But, uh, <laughs> oh, God, I just lost my place in my head. Thanks, Scatterbrain Johnny. Um, as far as, oh, God, Justin. I got you. Back. What were you asking me? <laughs> well, what, what I'm getting at is right. that there is, listen, guys, this is the type of show that asks you very broad questions. This proposes things to us that are very relevant to us, meaning what is the meaning of life? How we recreate it? What is the benefit of spiritual versus scientific, meaning tangible versus, you know, the unseeable uh, belief? What is the benefit of any belief system? Because this proposes a dead earth situation, which Ridley has done in the past, in which a civilization has failed due to its abstract and arbitrary belief systems per se. But there still is benefit. It's also proposed the other side of that. And I always like a balanced side. I always have talked about this very clearly. And I try to keep my own theology out of this. I'm not a very spiritual person, but I'm also not as ignorant as I used to be, in my opinion. I'm only speaking for myself. Yeah. In my 20s, I went through an atheist stage. I was raised Catholic. I was an altar boy. 
everything was fine don't worry about it guys made the joke a million times which i didn't have to uh but it was all good um wish i would have been more uh but anyways uh no it was fine but i, I but i had a introduction to the faith uh, yeah exactly but i i appreciated it and now i've come back and i've realized the benefit and we've seen indications of faith beyond science, meaning us a belief in something other than what they can reach out and grab or calculate being beneficial. We see the campion when he's testing the fungus and the fungo meter. Uh, Heidi knew the name, Kasim Co. shout out. Uh, I don't, uh, but you know, but the point is there is a benefit. There is a time in our life when we just hope for something. And there, if you can do everything you can do within that moment and you can still have a belief in something that means more, I don't see any harm in that. I don't see any harm in that whatsoever. But then you also see a fervent belief, right? zealots in, in these people yeah. that that weaponize yeah. on both sides because atheism you know I, I i would say i'm more agnostic than anything which is the most fence sitter you can be and just shame me as much right. as you want it is what it is but i see the benefit in that but when you have a series that poses questions like this you are absolutely not going to get absolute answers there will be no absolutism no, in any of this but there still is the meaning thing, in it. right is uh something that i saw from this season and, and it's probably going to be the main takeaway from the show is faith in oneself yes uh but what you were saying as well to have uh faith in a higher power that holds you a little more accountable is also a strength especially in a world like this um so it, it would also be interesting to see if anything new gets deified next season if we have the emergence of a god um something good because we have this saw that portrays uh you know the worst of everything you know this is the and you know it well Guskowski said this it may not be evil we just think it's evil so there there could be a question as to you know if we're seeing what the saw's motivations are if we're if we see what happened to the psychic space snakes shout out dante uh <laughs> you know then we we might have a more complicated antagonist which is you know in every good story I, I think that's what nice we've been given a complicated antagonist i think yeah. that's what we've been given we've been given this this thing for whatever we know it as as he as guzkowski was really uh revealing with as saying that it could be himself a belief in yourself it doesn't matter they this thing is not denying or disproving a belief in something larger it is taking advantage as we know in our real life as other doctrines institutions and, and people have done so this is a third party that we know is using the information that is given to it through a praise of a certain deity saul that doesn't prove or disprove saul but we know that there is a imposter of sorts which manifests in a snake that is the big takeaway for the stream we have something that only knows and it is confirmed by guzkowski in these arbitrary and abstract very surprising please you're welcome to come on brother um interviews that you give to seemingly everybody that that there is this uh this being this force that has taken advantage of this and it has chosen to manifest itself in this way but the point is it is making otho believe that it needs to procreate right otho rapes tempest, tempest. baby is a direct result of saul so yes. it makes you wonder what's going on with that baby but not saul is per that se the prophet you know i think they're trying to hide the prophet and yeah. make you think it's the two kids but, but it's not saul you, that baby something like what Guskowski oh, yeah. is telling us is that it isn't Saul. It is what these people, their belief system happens to be a Mithraic belief, guys. That's what I'm getting at. They take it as Saul. So Otho was told from Saul, seemingly, just as Marcus is. What if Saul's an Paul, acronym for the AI computer? It, I think they're just, it, it's fainting. <laughs> it, it is is posing as this. So what Johnny is saying is that we have a catalyst right here. We have an arc right here where Tempest is impregnated by somebody that believes they have to make a profit. They are being used. So belief systems, and it could be, as Guskowski said, a belief in himself, a belief in anything. It could be the, the spaghetti monster for all that matters within this series. It really could. And it's not really all that applicable. All that matters is they think they're doing it for some higher reason. And it's taking advantage of it. That does not discount it. I find that fascinating. It shows the uh, the vulnerability of, 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 of this type of belief. But it also can show the strength of this belief as well. I don't think it discounts it as well. So we have Tempest Baby, which is a direct result of manipulation. We have Paul shooting Sue, a direct 
consequence of this manipulation. Caleb going insane, a direct consequence of this manipulation. The snake being born through mother, a direct consequence of this third party, call it Saul, call it the, the god of top shelf fandom, please do actually. I, I, I'm in need of it, uh, uh, the praise, but yeah, for, all jokes and bad jokes aside, claim it derives from whatever you want. It derives from something that is utilizing a belief in something other than itself, and it is using it for evil. So the belief in something that is being pretty much hijacked doesn't discredit the actual belief, to be clear. It's not crapping on religion at my point, but it's also very interesting because it's yeah. using that power. Because guess what's known about the unknown? Though, right? Nothing. It's very easy. It's very good to hijack. That's a great thing to hijack. It's like, well, what's known about the unknown? Well, nothing. Well, I guess we'll hijack that because we don't need to prove anything. So this is, this, I believe it's an artificial intelligence. I believe that it is some sort of an omniscient being that needs to at least use people as surrogates. It could not fly without mother. We have a situation in which it did not have the powers of the necromancer until it made it with it. It is reliant on human and artificial intelligence it puts it somewhere in between i think mm -hmm. that this again does not discredit faith it only empowers the idea that things both good and bad can be used for evil and uh, i think it's going to bond these artificial beings and organic beings as we would call them together in the end uh johnny i'll let you take it away after that diatribe sorry well i mean it's just definitely a false god being portrayed here whether a real god exists in the story or not i think You'll probably get hints at it see some kind of miracle maybe um uh, that, that's all you'll ever get is a, is a well maybe that coincidentally happened because god uh but th this is clearly something disguising its intentions now it doesn't mean these intentions are completely and solely evil it may have some reason for wanting to bring back existence a hell every organism ai or otherwise probably just wants to live at least that's what I'm seeing in this. Uh, but this wants, wants followers as well. And Mary Sue, <laughs> I can't, I'm not going to stop calling her Mary Sue <laughs> because that's her names. And she... Is your first name really... Direct, Mary, there, there's, it's just Sue. Is there really I a Mary? I think her name was Mary it, before uh, she got her face down. I'll look it James. up. I'll look it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. But she's not your classic Mary Sue. No, yeah. But, if that's true, though, I do want to touch that. We'll leave that for later. That's a nice little Easter egg. That's yeah. a fun one. Sorry. And it, she was a direct uh, link to, like, breaking up that faith. Also, Campion is, you know, something that's going to uh, contradict the faith. So you got to get rid of Campion. It wanted Campion to kill itself. It, it, Paul tried to kill his mother. Uh, this is going to keep happening and you see it's you know you can argue that the psychic space snake snake yeah it flew it flew the spacecraft okay well we won't really get much into that but it, they come out on the other side of the planet so it's completely separated them from their other belief systems so campions and tempest are kind of going to be alone in their at least campion and his atheistic beliefs and there has been kind of miracles here because i feel like sue is going to be at least a believer at this point uh based on what's how, how did you read my mind it must be god because how else could you know um you know she's probably feel like she's being judged she's been waiting on it the whole time she's been the most guilty about what you know they did to paul's parents and just taking over them like and she also has embraced paul as a mother and truly loves him more than anything else loves him more than herself so if she thinks he's the prophet, well, you know, she's going to be converting people. Plus, she's got to stay alive. She's the medic, and we got, like, Lord of the Flies down there. So we'll see. Well, I think what's interesting about it is is that everything that hears my thoughts, meaning that we all think that we can, you know, speak to something in per privacy, uh, you know, I guess maybe Catholics wouldn't, but, uh, you know, and, and speak to something higher than ourselves. So if it hears you, does that mean it's good? You know, like the power, does that, does that embody, uh, you know, grace and in, in, in that virtue and so forth. So I think that's the confusing part is that we look at anything that can do things that we cannot is a higher thing, not just in, in power 
but in a sense of virtue, I think we're kind of predestined or, uh, you know, pre-programmed to believe this as well, is that, you know, anything that has these uh, abilities that are above our own and are omniscient to any sense or telepathic are definitely going to be held in a higher power because they relate to a lot of our, you know, scripture or whatever it is that you believe in mythology, whatever it may be. Uh, uh, somebody asked, uh, Dante asked, did the scriptures bring them to the splint or did they find it via telescope? So Kepler 22b, now there's been people that are much more uh, adept in this area and much more informed. And they have informed me that Kepler 22b is a, a planet that is supposed to be much uh, like our own atmosphere that exists with, I can't remember, is within our galaxy. We discovered in the Goldilocks zone. There you go. What is So what is the Goldilocks zone? It's not, because if you say if it's outside of our solar or galaxy, they're going to freak out. But it's, <laughs> it's not with. I think it's when it within our galaxy but yeah it's out of our solar system and the goldilocks zone is the space between the sun and the end of the solar system there is a zone and it it depends on what type of sun you have we have a yellow a regular yellow sun if you have like a white dwarf or you have a binary star system and this could all be changed but it's the relative spot where the heat it doesn't get too hot and it doesn't get too cold that's why they call it the goldilocks zone because it's it's just right. You know, like, <laughs> this porridge is yeah, not yeah. That's that's what I call it. It's God, it. what raised by wolves. <laughs> so the wolves that are trying to get into the three little piggies, you know, uh homes, and then you had the Goldilocks system, which is essentially another break and entry, right? An intrusion of privacy. Uh these are all very creepy yeah, everything. Yeah. Uh, don't look in any uh doctor or mythology, it all gets fucked. But yeah, that's very interesting. So yeah, no, this is something that's applicable and uh, something that I've talked about with the Expanse, the little that I've actually spoken to that series because I find it to be fantastic and I won't speak on it much until I've watched the whole thing. But Mormons are in space because Mormons' doctrines are actually applicable to space travel, like meaning they have a belief system which extends itself beyond. And yeah, that golden book came from the stars. Well, you could get a star. My point is, if we ever leave Earth, we're going to need belief systems that are like don't tie us and don't tether us so much to, to this Earth. To you know, firma. We're, yes, we're earthly beings. So, uh, you know, and it, it is true. It, it's a sad truth in some people's probably minds. Uh, it is what it is. So, yeah, uh, Mithraism is something that's, that has extended itself uh, throughout the Picts, throughout Greeks, throughout Romans, throughout even uh, Christianity to some extent. So look into it. I'll, I'll link it again. It is not a made-up thing. You don't get to interpret the origins of it. That's ridiculous. Please stop doing it. Um, and it is what it is. But it is also applicable to something that goes off of a galactic system of some sorts and works off of the sun as a deity and life brainer and so forth. There's people that look to the earth, stars, and blood, and all that within it for, for belief. So I think the bigger thing that we've learned – after season one ended is we all were wrong including the people on kepler 22 what are we to take from that it isn't soul that's the thing because we had the um the the dio dodecahedron dodecahedron the d do 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 yeah the dodecahedron that we have as an example is a monument but also seemingly a force of power we've seen that manipulated as well I think the big takeaway that Guskowski has given us is not only a belief in oneself or it doesn't really matter what doctrine you tie it to um, is that there is a third party at play that has manifested itself. Like I said, so where do we go from here? Where do we stand from here? We have Marcus slash Caleb that is now been greeted by a lot of inept atheists that have uh, taken a Mithraic ship in which he had to. And again, I'm not going to praise this because it's never great when you have a writer that has to say so much after the fact, you know, he, he he's given us a lot of exposition after the fact, you know, uh, I'm not trying to crap on it, but I think he needed a lot of it, but it's not great yeah. though. Right. Yeah. It's just not mm -hmm. great. It's just not great. It's not great that he had to say, listen, this is what happened with that ship because we saw the patriarchal cross, which I did further study in, and I need to redact the statement that I made that it's definitely Christianity. It most likely is, but there is also other belief systems that use the double cross, so that would not necessarily be tied to Christianity. So again, I think we need to stop looking at belief in any way other than something other than yourself. I think that's a fair agreement. Yeah, I think you're going to see 
you're going to see threads. You're going to see pieces of so many different belief systems in here because that's that's what it's about. It's challenging belief systems. It's challenging faith. And, you know, even the answer in the end may not be completely clear. You'll be left to determine on your own, I hope, unless it, he gets done with the, the final season of the show and does a four-hour podcast on it. Yeah. But <laughs> I hope you kind of get left to a little bit of interpretation, uh, how much faith is too much faith, uh, what which faith is the right faith. You, you may never know, but, you know, that's, uh, that's up for you. That's up for us as humans to figure out how we're supposed to navigate this world and uh yeah that's what the, that's what yeah like i said that's what's good about the show also it looks cool <laughs> yeah well it's it is a fun show and this is something that i brought up because when when you analyze story and we all look for meaning above what we see within our own experiences you know that leading to conversations about theology about the meaning of life about existence in general uh even you know it, it, exploring things that i'm not all that familiar with the scientific side right like we're seeing people talk about oh, it's 638 light years away listen guys it's pretty close in light years i don't know yeah i mean like <laughs> honestly Guz talk to guskowski because he's a light it takes 638 years to get there but that's, that's why the way. androids were able to make it there before the the humans because they didn't have to go into this cryogenic state they could transfer you know or travel in a, in a faster light i'm not here to speak to the the scientific uh relevance or you know actual accuracy of the series i didn't write it i will speak to the theme so i will speak to the overall message and that is what is the benefit of belief and who are like somebody just brilliantly said jen sometimes answers right in front of us the title refers to whom are the wolves androids or the human race i believe she means who are the actual wolves i think that the wolf is within and I, I would say the wolf is within all of us because we are always predatorial yeah. and we are always looking to be the top meaning the top of the food chain and now we see these that de de evolution which is not scientifically i'm not a scientist but i know this that's not a real thing we don't de-evolve we regress but my theory is the de-evolution as we see it per se of this being that looks yes quite like beans and prometheus but this is more of an example of what we would look at as the evolution. But but maybe because of this artificial intelligence in which is dictating their thoughts, as we see, is not advantageous. I mean, come on. If you look at Otho and think that's a good route, uh, then obviously something might be wrong with you. I think that that de-evolution might be evolution. So who's to say that their lack of the... I think that they're taking a little bit of a statement on technology and they're saying that the de-evolution as we see it traditionally is actually evolution because of the circumstances and constraints and within the environment in which they live in. Does that right. make sense? They adapt and yeah, survive. They are adapting and surviving. Sometimes that means stop looking at your iPad. Stop looking at your phone, Justin. Stop looking at this, what we're doing right now. Like stop it's all like of it. Whole generation is going to have drop neck syndrome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's we're all fucked. Is. Look it up. <laughs> Yeah, like you don't have a head when somebody's walking behind you. I think it's a very creative <laughs> metaphor, though. Like, I mean, it's kind of sad, yeah. uh, but it's very creative. So we say, oh, we can de-evolve. And then maybe one would say, well, is that really de-evolution? If we become so dependent on technological that we become inept, we become hobbled is my favorite uh, favorite word goes. We used to get super chats for it yeah. with Westworld. Yeah, I think it's a very and relevant. Going back to the wolves, Justin, that uh, those beings, what they have become, that that plays to animals like humans being animalistic at their core and us being humans that's always trying to fight that whereas the androids are trying to fight their lack of humanity to become more emotional and try to become more human that's kind of also the beauty between uh the androids and and the humans here but we see them even uh, these creatures they look like kind of like pack animals for the most part we don't know how much intelligence they got but it clearly can kind of communicate with one another but this uh, something that did bother me is what Guskowski, he might have been joking about this, okay? So take it with a grain of salt. But what, what he said about the mysterious stranger, which got killed by mother instantly, he did not have a chance. Uh, anyways, mother could have handled him good, tied him up and tried to talk to him. I I'm agree. pretty sure she could learn his language really fast. She did more amazing things. Um, but he said that, you know, he he insinuated that there were more of these strangers like this that weren't as devolved as the others that 
maybe they were uh, meditating in a cave somewhere. Maybe. I did not like that, but uh, they meditated and were able to keep their brains on track. But it goes back to what Justin was saying and what has happened to Caleb and what's happened to Paul here, that it corrupts the brains of whoever it enters. You know, mother's brain is different, so it might not be able to corrupt her the same as it can a uh, organic being, but uh, it is clearly going to affect her as well. Anybody that's been touched by this has been and not the same person afterwards. Say we were to maybe get the Goldilocks syndrome and adapt to a bear of some sort, Johnny. <laughs> just saying. You oh, know, I just noticed you had that. Yeah, I was saying, on, like, on, no, on, like, on. the good on you for it. Yeah, the Zoom has allowed this to happen now, and we have to turn this off because I am not mature enough to stop doing it like like there's so many this things for me right? yeah 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 loading yeah forget, yeah yeah but, but this saying. is a bad example of it like this is us devolving or regressing i would say but uh yeah the devolving <laughs> would would imply that it is not uh beneficial for them so we look at evolution as a linear thing which is not but also the evolution is not something that really happens it's regressing that happens but um evolution so i think that what uh guskowski has really led us to, to believe is first off let me get this stupid fucking thing um, stupid bears beat him every single time in a fight uh, is a few different things. And uh, one of the big things that I've taken away from it is that he talks about the hole in the earth and he does dismiss any type of actual travel through any type of, uh, you know, universes or anything like that. So he has dispelled any of those. So I kind of like that. And that's one thing I'll say for all of his uh, take yours off too. I can't look at it's you. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm getting it off. <laughs> I get off. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoy that. Uh, but what I also enjoy out of uh, Guskowski is that he is, uh, you know, leading us towards a place in which we have to have people that are going to bind together and try to figure things out. Because if people look, I mean, it is a very simple story. Like Jen, brilliantly, thank you for coming. Hopefully you subscribe. Yeah. That they, they said before, sometimes the answer is right in front of us. We look at de-evolution in something that has made itself, yes, obviously very um, aesthetically gross and like like the, the very personification of de-evolution, which is probably unlikely. I don't see why you have to look like that, but it is what it is. The, the kind of messaging behind it is that maybe technology isn't the way, you know, just as, you know, we, we look at some of these doctrines and we think that, oh, that's ignorant so forth well you know this reliance on technology can hobble you so we have technology and mankind maybe finding itself more in sync with each other as maybe it should be in in fighting against a greater force because the third party has been presented to us i think the big disagreement so far is how it's been presented to us because it could not fly he has clarified this without the necromancers mm -hmm. powers so it is taken from that paul wouldn't have known anything about marcus or sue if it wouldn't have been for him praying to an outer power, Otho is, we see a lot of instances in which people are speaking to a higher power. So this is this overt, you know, depiction of things that are speaking to something more than itself. It's taking advantage, like I say, a priest in a box type of uh, theory uh, where it is taking advantage of that belief system. Doesn't definitely dismiss it. It just definitely shows it's susceptible, susceptible to corruption, right? Which I think no, nobody could argue against, believer or non-believer that belief systems and religions and any, any type of institution like that is susceptible to, to, to corruption. I think it's got a lot of real world commentary in it. We're never going to have any finite answers to the meaning of life. If you're watching raised by wolves looking for that, but I think that you will get a lot of meaning out of it, especially with mother and father being so selfless in some ways, hey, they but they get to develop their relationship now, uh, which is going to be really good for season two. I'm going to love to see it. They're alone by themselves and they have to start off without their kids. Something that they're attached to the hip. They've grown to love these. Guskowski even said that the kids are what made these androids human. That made them start to feel things. And I, I find a beauty in that uh, beyond anything, you know, this is about motherhood. This is about fatherhood. This is about being a parent. This is about being a child. This story encapsulates everything it is to be human. Um, and the more I even talk about it, I'm convincing myself that this is a good show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it, it, it is. It is. And everybody's pissed off or, well, not everybody's pissed off, but the psychic space snakes, yeah, that's going to slap you right in the face that you can see Fonzie's balls as he's going over you and the sharks at the same time. Um, pardon my French. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a really, really good thing. Um, 
I, I think that yeah, the, I'll, I'll cut it off right there. No, no, that's it's it, it, that's wonderful because I think that the the big picture is who are the people that continue to follow the snake even though it's devious and obviously overtly, yeah, um, at least non advantageous um, incentives, you know, like uh, intentions, meaning. This is something that made it spawn. So how much do we give credence to our, our our actual belief system when something spawns out of it that is so evil? That's where this like overtly way over the top, like you said in in the script brilliantly, like uh jumping the uh what is it, the psychic snake. Jumping uh, the shark. Yeah, jumping, yeah, <laughs> to per se. But but like I think that's a test of it, right? Because if they believe it comes from something in which they have this spiritual belief in they might try to justify it no matter what, right? So how far will you go to turn this belief system of yours to, to, to prove it, you know, with, with a deity that is clearly an overt, like you couldn't get a more overtly evil thing. It's got so many teeth, way too many teeth. I'm sorry, sharks, no offense. Uh, but yeah, you know, I mean. I saw that though, right? Yeah. I, mother kept it from a lot of people. And she did. And can't even actually see it. Uh, you know, it's. And you saw something. Uh, would it be enough? You know, I think, yeah, we're going to have Campion probably being kind of a loner next season, right? And trying to make his own way, possibly, with Tempest. Uh, Tempest is up in the air, you know, because everybody's seen some shit um, and some weird things have happened. And, you know, her baby is going to be kind of the big thing next season, at least with the kids. And she's going to have to come to term or not come to term. Uh, we'll see. But there's going to be a lot of focus on her trying to make sure that baby's there safe because mother went well out of her way this whole season to make sure that Tempest stayed safe. And we also know that Saul has influenced this pregnancy for better or worse. It's kind of disgusting, but Otho got what he deserved. I was very happy to see that that helmet crush on his head. Uh, that was pretty, that's a pretty cool scene. Uh, I feel like he should have body slammed a few more people, but <laughs> and yeah. used that power. But you know, it, it's going to be a, another motherhood themed season, which I think this is. You know, the whole show is kind of based off that. Like I was just saying. Well, yeah, in, in the mother archetype, as far as as well as the the father archetype, and we do see a mixture of uh, the 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 unknowable, meaning the belief in, in in something other than oneself or science, but also a mixture of science with the ingestion of the eye by by Caleb, which makes him have this like trippy last episode, which I'm not all that in agreement both with. Both of it, them, he ate both of them. Yeah, uh, it mother's is. gonna get them back at some point, Gizakowski. <laughs> hinted at so yeah he does he does cite though that that is a a a reaction that is like chemical get what i mean yeah like so there's this grounded aspect of people trying to find meaning in science and then also trying to find meaning outside of it so they're both being blended together because this leviathan as we like to say absorbs this this psychic snickety snake um this kuka kante or whatever the fuck we want to call it from the mines uh uh kuka khan right Ooh. Say plumed serpent. Yeah, plume serpent, uh uh dust devil, uh is something that is applicable to mythology and, and so forth, but it is just taking the form of whatever people will will find meaning in, and I think it's very very overtly evil, but at the same time, you know, we have people that have to fight. Like what happens if you pray forever and then the devil appears, right? Well, you've yeah, gotten an answer, really but it might not be the answer you were looking for. So what do you do with that? John John Haymaker points out, you know, it's a flying lamprey fish. And I would agree with that. It definitely looks just like a lamprey, but Guzkowski himself is calling it a snake or a serpent. Um, and it, I don't really know what to do with it. It looks like uh, it'll be full grown as those big bones. <laughs> I don't know. It's this mythical monster that's got, they, they're going to have to play with it delicately. Delicately, I <laughs> take that out of context, but yeah, I'm they're going gonna to have to, you know, and this is something different that's never been seen on that planet. Yes, uh, we've had these animals before, like Justin was saying, they he said that they were ground, ground dwellers uh, that did not fly before, and now this is half of what Mother is, and these dark photons come into play, which is theoretically a real thing but you know <laughs> thank not. you yeah but let's bring that up because because i've been talking about dark photons like there's something i own 
Um, those are <laughs> equally something we have no proof of, just to be clear. Like, I, I And I'm a big science fella. I'm a Bill Nye guy. And all jokes aside, uh, dark photons <laughs> are, in theory, something that could exist. But, like, we do need to maybe hold back. And, I'm, and, and trust me, obviously, you should probably be able to tell, and I'm trying to keep my own theology beyond it, that I'm all for things that we can prove, and I'm all for the science. I, I don't miss anything yeah. that is scientifically proven. But let's not say dark photons, as I have in the past. Like, I got some in my fucking pocket, which maybe I do. Uh, who, who knows? But, yeah, they're not also a proven thing. Like, they they also are these things. I think that once we just get, like, photon in the mix, we're like, oh. So the, that so this is based off something. Sounds really scientific. Yeah, it sounds science. It sounds re- based at all this religion. So, like, I think that's kind of where they're going with the series, people, and that's why yeah. it might leave us a little bit up in hands, like right up in arms per se, with like, well, what's happening? Because you're not probably get, just like the leftovers. You're not going to really get a finite answer to any of the, these bigger theological or you know scientific questions. But you're going to get sci-fi heavy on the fire. Yeah, it, there you go. Yeah, so you'll you'll get some answers. You should. And uh, it should mean something. So you are up because this is a mixture of this thing that is embracing spiritual belief, but also is taking from what they have created before, which is also cloaked in this weird little origin story of they read the Mithraic texts and they they made them from those, but they don't exactly understand the inception of them, right? Like so, there's also like this Chicken weird egg. middle ground. It's- this is a good point because Dante asks Dante asks is asking about this. So did Kepler have necromancers in the past? It seems only regular androids gave birth to the past snakes. And yeah, it doesn't seem that they had anything as special as a necromancer. And also Guskowski hinted at this, and this is why the new snake <laughs> is different. Um, and you saw the dodecahedron, which they seem to worship like a god. This is more, Saul is that, is the dodecahedron in my opinion. That's just my opinion. But they put it in there, the ceremonial, they put the ceremonial helmet and there's a hole that comes out just for the, the, you know, the snake to be born. And he also made the point that these androids, they don't have any genitalia. They don't have any orifices other than their mouth. And yeah, I said orifice and I was able to put this into one of Justin's streams. So I'm very excited about that. Congratulations. But, um, they did have androids and when she picked that skull up that was a really cool looking skull you know she finally realized when it was too late what was about to happen to her but they ritualistically seemed to do this wait till it's about to birth and then throw them into these holes and we saw this conception moment of the spaceship being the sperm and the core being an egg and it seems like that's that's part of the ritual but yeah they were had to have been uh, manipulated into creating these things so is it the chicken or the egg is this some kind of ai that wants snakes for its pet like i think it is like the sun god uh, had kuku khan as a pet in some of the mayan stories or is this the physical embodiment of a dead species that's trying to come back something that peter griffin is pointing to but i think for sure necromancers are new there and it's like a kid in a candy shop when it got a hold of mother Uh, yeah and that's the big difference absolutely and i like what everybody's saying what i just linked right here is what i linked to another content creator that was trying to look for meaning within the symbolism on twitter of uh uh, of the mithraic symbols and uh, the mithraic symbols are not something to be like decided upon yourself uh you can take the meaning from but they're real things and here's a website that'll show you i linked the same thing to them they're not like up in the air about like what they are or not it's not something that was made for this show uh so like look at mithracism uh in this link that i gave you it'll show you uh the constellations it'll show you the symbolism in which they use and look at how the show is using that now let's we're not acting like that that's for sure something that means anything larger than some people believed in it in one point or another but we're we're saying that there are symbolic meanings that we have taken throughout history, throughout many civilizations and cultures from a Mithraic belief. And they're using that in the show. I think it's a safe bet. I think it's a safe bet because it's not a direct contrast with Christianity per se, and it's not as uh, polarizing. So yeah, please take a look at that website I just showed you. And I I agree with uh, who just said that they hope that it isn't something that's just evil. 
I really like that. Um, I hope uh, yeah, Peter I Griffin. There you go. Yeah, I hope the serpent isn't evil and just wants to speak uh, and is just a species trying to survive. So yeah, um, everything has its motivations to survive. So th is it a succubus or a leviathan of some sort that needs to feed off of others and kill others to survive? You could argue that humans, mankind, are a parasite, right? You could make that argument. So when we look at this de-evolution, evil's a lot of perspective. Yeah, what yeah. Evil is. It's whatever isn't me. When I look at the mirror, I see it. I'm like, oh, oh. shit. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh, my God. And then I say, that's not it. No, but no, I think that that one and one, I, I think that, <laughs> that that is what, what I'm getting at. And I, I know we kind of dance around it a lot, guys. But really, the meaning of this series is to look at what our beliefs can do to us as far as molding facts. We look at a lot of things from political to idea, you know, to, to theological, meaning the ideological to theological to psychological in a way that the medium is the message. I said this a lot in this channel because it is, it's true. You don't look at the facts in which somebody gives you, you look at the medium in which you get those facts through. Meaning if somebody you disagree with tells you something, you are just scientific, you're scientifically adverse to them. You, you reject them. Not saying that you do all the time, but you are more more likely to, to because they represent something you see overall is not good so we don't really take in factual information as clearly or as openly as we'd like to think we do the smarter you are the higher iq you have studies show that you're just better at dismissing statistics and you can do it more intelligently um people that don't read books write books um i don't know i've seen this time and time again and it's very frustrating but i think that this series is allegory for that i think this is us looking at belief and it's not meant for us to crap on it because i don't like that either i don't think the the route to intelligence is just speaking to anything that we can't completely define at this moment in our evolution and our species reign that w it, that that means it's pointless no that's ignorant so I, I do believe in something more than ourselves but also i believe in science so i think this is a nice middle ground i wish they would have synced the landing stuck the landing a little bit more as far as it went with the conclusion the season one gave us some resolution there's these macro and micro story threads in which you can utilize in a story like this this is something that mm -hmm. fundamentally uh lost failed to do fundamentally something should have wrapped up yes you you episode. can do easy something. wins easy wins they're called like okay will they won't they i know it sounds stupid but like yeah. Bad example, but whatever, maybe a relationship. Give us resolution in some way for some thread. Don't make everything this philosophical, theological, you know, big picture thing because you will never wrap that up in a way that's actually ethical or, or intelligent. So, like, I do appreciate what Aaron Guskowski has, has said. I, I would like him to come and speak with us since he, again, seemingly speaking with everybody, um, and, and hear what he had to say about that. But I think there are easier ways to go about this that lead people because i think the best way to get people to see things and, and evolve spiritually and intellectually is to have eyes on it if you make eyes turn away you're not doing anything for anybody so i think a lot of people are very upset with the end of the season and that's not advantageous for your bigger ethical you know ploy meaning like you have like this big idea that you want to do which is like all is very ambitious well, and has a lot of integrity but if you don't get people to see it who the hell cares people don't open their eyes unless they're looking well this is the thing too uh, us as viewers everybody out there and maybe you'll agree with me maybe you won't uh you know, when we're watching a show like this even when it's a dark show this is dystopian uh, along with hopeful <laughs> at the same time even with shows this dark, you need to get some sort of satisfaction. You need to feel good at some point. Yeah. And we got no good good feelings from this episode. It was like we a did, kick in the none nuts. None of our characters that we've come to care, care about got anything. They, they only got destruction. Uh, and like we were saying, you got the setups. You got the conflicts for next season. But we got nothing... That, that would give us any satisfaction for our character arcs. And, it, it, you know, the theology is a framework in which, you know, it, the characters perform. Their story is what really matters. Um, and while you're getting across your other messages, you know what I mean? John Truby. Um, look at John Truby, The Anatomy of Story. Look at Robert McKay story. Uh, McKay specifically will say, if you're telling the story you're trying to tell, 
then you've failed. Meaning you need to cloak it. And I don't mean to be all like, you know, in some, you know, uh, I, I don't really believe in the whole Machiavellian uh, reasoning others do, but Machiavellian about it, meaning cloaking it and, and hiding it within. But it is true. Like I had a big issue with this with Watchmen. I thought that their advertising was not advantageous for them because I think it was a message that needed to be conveyed to people. And I think they would have had more eyes on it if they wouldn't have been so overt with, hey, we're going to solve for race. Like, I think it was a very good series, but I think they just turned a lot of people off to it. Probably the people that needed to watch it the most. So I think that there is a power in story that if utilized correctly, that's the reason there are stories and there are actual like, you know, factual accountings of things you, you know meaning like historical documents uh, uh any type of uh period uh documentation in of events or so forth and then there's actual mythological stories and in and, and retelling of stories like arthur or any of the authorian tales or anything like that that there is power within story because if it, it is truth devoid of fact so there is an important aspect of that meaning you have to have messages that can be conveyed in a way in which they are easily doomed for the mass populace and i think that this story fails a little bit in that aspect i think that they needed to close up a few superficial bonds they could have definitely put some arcs in there that yes would not be all that meaningful in the long run but we are human beings we have serotonin dopamine drips that that drip there in story and there's been studies that show that we mourn the end of a story as much as we mourn a love lost one this is not hyperbolic it's actually true so there are things to take advantage of when telling a story and it is easy wins arcs that you know you're going to clue, conclude and then mystery boxes that will remain mystery boxes these most ambitious of storytellers usually fail because they are very i don't know i guess you just call it they, they they find themselves to be very virtuous or they find themselves to be doing something of greater work which they maybe could do if they would maybe take a step down and do a well they won't they love story some sort of conclusion that makes people feel like they watched 10 episodes for a reason other than a snake just came yeah. because we get the overarching. Well, yeah. That's your resolution. It's, that's yeah. It's and so snake. now a snake is here. So like, I get it like, cause I get the bigger picture, but also we're human beings and we don't need, if you wanted a lecture, then fucking submit it to the academic community and go on a lecture tour, not a YouTube tour and give us a story that really touches us because enable you won't pass your message through us unless you actually are able to connect with us and yes a lot of us including me are very simple and primal and we just want the easy things in life that that make us feel satisfied so sneak it in there be a little bit of that machiavellian character you know i'm sorry <laughs> well, that's my take on it though I didn't re that really is look, let me ask you this and brucey e. moore said this uh, right before the stream instead of explaining the show uh gerzo should make a part two to the finale for season one soon what I would say is, should have the finale been the penultimate episode? I Yeah, I, I mean, I said that in the one before, and me and Bruce have talked yeah. about this. I share, uh, me and Bruce, are, it, I think all three of us are on, on the same page with this one. Yeah, I think that this should have been the messy ending of the penultimate episode, meaning the Game of Thrones, you know, not let's just go to season five so we don't get any fucking hate. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the battle of, uh, you know, the Blackwater, uh, you know, the Red Wedding. But those were always the penultimate episode. That's because the story ends in a place where you have an action that takes place. And then if the story is to continue in which it does and a, a broader ranging overarching, you know, message in which this is conveying, you need to have a, a reset of sorts. So the 10th episode should be after the snake comes out of mother. And father dried through the fucking gestation metaphor of Earth or, or Kepler 22 in 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 Paul shoots Sue, you know, all these things that you should have had some sort of a, um, a state of calm, a resetting period in which set us up perfectly for season two. Because at this point, we don't know if it's just going to be snakes on a motherfucking Kepler 22 or if it's just going to, you know, I mean, like, I don't think it will because. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, but like, I mean, in all fairness, he shouldn't really need to do interviews. I, I'm happy he is doing them, but I think that, you know, and you I'm thankful to everybody that sends practice. me these interviews because they say a lot of people, the common um, narrative is we understand it, And it's definitely true. We understand this story better after reading these or watching these interviews with the writer. That is not a great sign though. I will just be clear about that. That is never a great yeah. sign. I'm sorry. I don't understand how you could really argue against that. It's like, well, I wrote a story. Nobody got it. So then I told everybody what it meant. 
yeah, you don't want to really have to do that. Mm, um, ideally, you know. yeah, you, you might want to tell the story there. So, like, yeah, you might want to, like, have that. I agree with Russo. Is season two going to have a time jump? The Lowdown Show. I also okay. want to give a shout out. You've been supportive since the beginning. I believe you have your own channel because of the name of your your handle here. Uh, so make sure to check. Do you do? Can you answer that in the chat before I send people over there? Um, I don't want to send them to old <laughs> Christina Aguilera videos or something. That's a bad one. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like you would have a channel with that name. Uh, but you've been supportive and uh, insightful in the comments since the beginning of this. Uh, so go check them out if it is in fact a channel um but also do we think it's gonna have a time jump no because again yeah. of what guskowski's told us and i'll go ahead and just link that interview for you guys as well yeah i mean we're already set up we need to see the store we need to find out if sue's gonna die we need to see where the hell mother and father are which he already spoiled it thanks thanks guskowski it's the tropical zone okay <laughs> so we'll get to see that in season two but it's but just like when netflix did the Stranger Things trailer and they showed uh, Hopper was still alive. They like literally just showed his face in a Russian boot camp. Uh, boot camp, probably a gulag. What am I talking about? Boot camp, probably. Like, oh you know, man, man, you consider those vacation. to be the same thing? Make but... sure this motherfucker doesn't run your country. <laughs> hey, it's a boot camp gulag. What's, uh, they, what's the difference, fellas? In the preview, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, uh, tomato, on, tomato. You got, you got to leave a little bit. To the imagination i think that's where guzankowski messed up here but also you know he might have could have just been excited to talk about it because what we did find of his we're on really small channels like to see people he maybe even knew uh, i'm not yeah. gonna make any get to know me aaron um <laughs> but um you know so i i enjoyed hearing him talk about a show that i i like but i I agree with Justin. I didn't enjoy having to understand the show better because he had to explain a lot of stuff. Um, ah, you know, it's, it's a it's, it's a, a tough, tough area, game, but... Johnny, and we'll link his script for the what we originally going to do besides this, which that's my call. It probably just would have been more profitable for script. It wasn't like it's irrelevant. Uh, and also, uh, the lowdown show. I just uh, I made you a moderator, so if you want to link your channel one time out, feel free to do. It. Um, and Jen. Stories that are written for the gen pop are so overt, they're difficult to watch. I agree with you at a, on a intellectual level. Uh, and also we talk about this and Johnny talks about this in the script is that the, us, the, the analyzed story are always looking for things. We're looking for puzzle box stories, but I also have to, to take a step outside and look at big picture things like my Patreons that are intelligent people, but also don't have a whole bunch of time to waste, right? They want meaning within their show. They're not, they're not fools, but they also don't want to have to watch something eight times to get a meaning and have to watch a whole bunch of videos to like get something. That's not really what powerful story is. The most powerful stories since Hellenistic time, you know, uh, even before that, have been these mythologies that are fact devoid or truth devoid of fact, you know, and that is what I really think we should aim more for. And I think that right now a relevant conversation when I look to have on this channel eventually is the benefit of stories that actually, in theory, aren't that great of a story as far as structure goes, which I would kind of rank so far this one as, but are beneficial because of the medium in which they're consumed in, meaning we get to have conversations like this, we get to explore deeper ideals in, in, in aspects of life, afterlife, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and all these, you know, fascinating things. So, like, this is a different time. So, the medium is the message. The time in which you're telling a story is very important and relevant to the meaning of the story. So, I think there is, I think there's been a lot of examples of very poor stories that have done very well. I wouldn't say this is a very bad story or a poor story, but I would say there has been a a a, a litany of bad stories that have uh, brought meaning. General Hospital still going strong. Yeah, General Hospital. Hey, want to know why? Because that's rinse and repeat. Uh, but yeah, it's not. But the, the point is, is what makes a good story and what is the, the purpose of a story? It, if it's to just create intelligent discourse and a deeper look into life, then this story has done it. Is it be a cohesive story thread in one season that has a beginning, middle, and end that is satisfying? This story failed in that. Now it is only a first season and we get a second so we cannot say it is a failed series but season one fails in a lot of aspects as far as resolution i am not giving up on it it has season two episode one i'm going to give it to two to really lay down some facts some snakes on the ground there and uh give us something uh you know solid to work off of but yeah we shouldn't have to have interviews and in, in so much dissection 
uh, of arbitrary aspects of story to really get meaning from them. But also, this is a social discourse that which is advantageous for humans in general. I say humans like I'm a fucking alien. Sorry, I've been stressed all week. So that's um, my take on it. It is, and you may or may not be an alien. I, I, I have to say, even everything we've said, I'm still excited for season, season two. Yeah, I'm not downing it. Did on really it. set it up well. Um, happy with the finale? No. Uh, and, and you know, just this is one possibility. You know, mother being set up as a deity, or at least being perceived as one. Are there still things that worship the snake out there? Are the, there's got to be more mysterious strangers. She's on another side of the planet. Guskowski himself stated that uh, she may find more tarot cards, those yeah. information cards. She may run into other people or a different type of civilization, maybe the same type of people, but different type of civilization. And she could be propped up as a deity by these cave dwellers. You know, there's a few. And also Campion could prop her up as a deity. If they are separated long enough, the memory of mother could become, you know, deified. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a way to explore religion in all aspects. I think it's a, in that way, it's kind of a brilliant show, but. It, it, it counts on that big picture aspect, meaning like longevity of people's attention span, which we all know from the retention rate on, you know, episodes that that's not true. But the one thing I will say is that that those tarot cards are a reminder that Guskowski also had to tell us. Those are a reminder to these de evolved beings of sorts. Sorry, I'm just going to have to use the, the you know, the, the verbiage that's within our series, but that's what they're being called. But it's a reminder to them of what's important. What's on those tarot cards is important. It's important to our story. It's important to what's going to be looked upon and what they need to remember. So they seem to think they need to pretty much forget how computer works, but they need to remember what these tarot cards mean. So it's kind of like, hey, dummy, don't get too dumb. I guess I don't know. He's only like an Android can access the memory files on there as well. Like he, she had to scan it to be able to get that. And he did say that it has to be scanned. Now they could have some type of machinery or could have had some type of machinery in the past that could read them. But I think more so now, just like he had the, uh, the damn Neanderthal head, which I don't even want to talk about. I just, yeah, and then I, I just go, no, just whatever. Okay. But it could have been relics, right? But he he clearly left them there for Mother to see um, as a warning. I, as a, I don't know. Uh, if it was a warning, it was too late. And if he was trying to stop her, he did a very horrible job at it. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, he's not very smart to run up behind her like that. After spying on them for the whole season, he just... Ah! Yeah. <laughs> because because he had to make himself home. evidently mankind <laughs> or whatever it is you know like uh the this this form of man had to make itself so stupid uh that it had to forget a bunch of things to be safe and then yeah so it lends itself to like uh barbaric behavior uh there's one you want to talk about intrinsic uh in like like uh, we were just talking about this johnny on a side note but like jess just came into the chat and then uh john haymaker just went who's that girl it's just i just made such a series of bad jokes about new girl lately, the, too, new girl amazing. jokes have been so <laughs> prevalent within our private conversations for me so thank you john oh, that's funny. yeah that's so me. weird that's so weird <laughs> it, i make it makes me think somebody's streaming our private conversations uh yeah uh yeah so we've been uh we're looking at brave new world uh we have you sons of bitches i'll find out um and we, yeah uh who's that girl it's just i used to watch that with uh one of my old roommates uh it's a good show it's a good show it's, it's a good bad show i love I zoe it. i would yeah. marry you zoe in a minute you beautiful doe-eyed girl um not your sister from bones i dislike her but yeah, um, she looks like that Russian horny monkey. Or at least that's what the model said. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Jess? You that girl, I guess. Um, so yeah, no, uh, Brave New World, Gains of London are going to be covered on here. Uh, we also have Vikings that will be coming up in the next two months, and it seems like they are putting the production of Valhalla Vikings, the the spinoff to Vikings, into uh, production faster than expected uh, after this COVID lull. So that's very interesting. It's something I've been uh, covering since the beginning. Uh, and so, yeah, we got Brave New World. We got Gains of London. Uh, maybe a theory video here or there will pop up for this. But I kind of wanted to close the book on this and kind of give, I don't know, maybe this wasn't the best idea to do. 
maybe it would have been better just to do Johnny's video. But I like to be honest with you guys, yeah. and and I really do feel that like this series has a lot of um has a lot of benefits. It has a lot of um definitely there there is a good chance that this has a lasting effect on us like Westworld has had to a point which in all fairness has had bad seasons itself so it, it is capable of a lot will it fulfill what it's capable of and live up to what it's capable of I don't know it is what it is I don't think it was done the best or at least resolved in the best way that is what it is. so yeah we wanted to be clear I, about uh, it and talk about it I want to give you a prediction for Vikings for the quick Bjorn does die and he gets launched uh, from a catapult to Kepler 22b after his death. And this is where the Neanderthal, Neanderthal skull came from. So I, I can accept that story for uh, how it got there. And I'm sorry for interrupting you for a horrible joke. They don't always land. <laughs> oh, you weren't interrupting much other than me saying that it, it might not live up to its potential. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. <laughs> nothing. I've never <laughs> lived up to my potential. So yeah. <laughs> nothing's new. On that. But there, there's meaning, and I think that you know the medium is the message is uh, something that's more prevalent than ever, of course, and I, I really truly believe it. And I, I, I'm also interested in looking into the different streaming services, like because Brave New World is on the Peacock network. Um, you know, everything has a network now, and everything's dividing. And if you actually look at the way in which you know television series as well as movies are are actually made. You'll find a lot of contradictions in which, like, you know, meaning like if Netflix gets all of its Disney's properties taken away from it, you know, it, it kind of is stabbing itself in the foot by starting its own. Meaning that when you look at like who makes Vikings, MGM Studios is behind it, but Michael Hurst's own studio or production company is behind it. MGM is a conglomerate, you know, part of the conglomerate of Disney and so forth. So, like, there's all of these things that I keep seeing a further separation of these streaming services, meaning an oversaturation and withholding of content. Meaning that if you want to watch something made by Warner Brothers, you'll have to go to Warner Brothers. If you want to watch, obviously, something made by Disney, you're going to go to disney and blah 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 and then i think that it is going to lead to a a uh, a monopoly of of some sorts of that of only a few will survive but yeah i think there's a lot of conflicting interest happening right now as far as the actual business side of of creative goes and i think that that's not beneficial because a monopoly over creativity and a uh you know a, a a a capitalistic approach purely in that sense is not advantageous and it is what it is but uh it kind of goes in cycles so it is Something we'll explore, though. I do want to do a rating on what the best streaming services are to get right now because now we have, we not YouTube it was Hulu for sure. Yeah, I mean HBO Max. <laughs> we got HBO Max, and then HBO, and I asked HBO like like that is one of the clearest examples of a just unnecessary paywall. Like, what the fuck yeah. do you need to do? And they they what they did is they went and they obtained properties like The Big Bang Theory, which you can go fuck yourself on that one. That's my channel. I'll say it as much as I want. It's a terrible show. I'll never pay without you a for laugh it. track. It's the worst you've ever seen. That is the worst. If you're smart enough to get what they're talking about, which I'm not, and I don't care, they're incorrect about how to pick a lock. And if you uh you know you sit there and just watch a bunch of uh pop culture references, terrible show that has a spinoff. But whatever, Friends, before my time. I'm just old enough to, to, you know, be old. I, I'm, I'm, I'm an office guy, but yeah, they, they absorbed a bunch of properties that aren't actually those Rick and Morty's on there. Um, but really the reason for having HBO max is HBO max wanted another paywall. So it's very, it's very, I don't know. I just, I think it's going in a bad way. You get Disney plus the Mandalorian. So everything needs to have its flagship. I wonder when the, the house of dragon comes out, how they will justify people getting both HBO. Cause you know, that'll be on HBO, you know, uh, proper. regular, so. right? So then they will need you to justify pain because right now you'll get HBO max. Cause that's got the new shit on it. Wait for something only to come out on HBO proper. You're looking at a fight right there that I think it's going to be very clear that they are just dicking you out. That's like your mailman saying, give me 10 more bucks for the rest of your mail that I have in my hand. I'm like, why? Uh, Cause well, I, want I mean, it. yeah, you you're going to have all the, you, you remember back in the day, I mean, well, hell, if you get regular cable now, it's still plus, 100 plus dollars a month just for like regular cable still. Yeah. Not to mention direct TV, expensive <laughs> as shit. Um, South Park is on it. Now yeah. they, they say this, the average, they, this is how the business people look at it. The average people pay this month for this much for TV. So they can afford 10 streaming services. <laughs> Why not? So we're going to make this, and then we're going to do, uh, What's the damn 
the seven minute episodes for your phone okay, oh Quibi, yeah oh yeah Quibi, Quibi, yeah that, the, oh, i did a salty news on that one on my patreon terrible back, uh, you can't see it anymore uh maybe one day but uh it, it's it's awful okay the best thing they did was get reno 911 back and uh, you know how how can i how you know I, that's not gonna defend itself so <laughs> you know what i mean it, it um, literally gets yeah. to a point where the paywall becomes so like it is if you look at Apple, right? Like Apple only sells Apple products in an Apple store, but you also can buy an iPad or a Mac within a Best Buy, right? So if, so if you were to put mm-hmm. an Apple store in the same complex, say as a Best Buy per se, then they would kind of be in, in competition yeah. with each other. So we have a lot of those instances when you have, that's why when WB got a, uh, or Fox got a, a bigger uh, portion of Hulu, they had to go be in front of a congressional, uh, you know, uh, like not a Senate, but congressional, uh, whatever, uh, party, whatever group, uh, it's special interest group, a, a committee, a congressional committee. Sorry. Uh, and they had to say, Hey, we're not a monopoly. I don't know why you would have to go and say that. I think the numbers should speak for that. But the point is like, they have to like, kind of like just people pr- that are a monopoly say that they're, yeah, they're like, are you a monopoly? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure <laughs> I'm, I'm simplifying it and I'm not an expert in that area, but yeah, we're getting to the ground where it's like Disney wants to actually have their own theaters because we've seen the issues with the star Wars films. Right. We've seen like with how yeah. they demand marketing, from them that is uh in, in in the theater use means they have to have their largest screen playing past 7 p.m them uh, the, the smaller studios went against it and and they would say this would sink us so now disney is actually going to make brick and mortar film studios or not film studios but actual uh theaters where you can only go see disney films in theater so that is like a marvel dr- I guess, that's a direct mar- marvel that's a metaphor now. for what's happening with streaming services it's like oh want to see a marvel movie get the marvel streaming service want to see a disney movie get the disney streaming service who owns them all the disney yeah. clung amazon prime yeah which- it's ridiculous it's, it's like your mailman saying here you, here you go dick here's half I'm like can i get the other half he's like no i'm like well you could hand it to me he's like i could but i just want more money yeah, yeah. Showtime, Cinemax, and Stars, all of them got streaming services now, I think. Why not? Uh, Why wouldn't you? It's going to get so oversaturated. It's going to get bad. Then it's going to all become one. But then the big studios will be washed out by the indies again. So it's all a cycle of shit. So it is what it is. That's my diatribe on it. But somebody just asked me about it. I don't know why you should buy HBO Max, to be honest with you, as soon as HBO comes out. I have no fucking clue. Because it just seems like overtly evil practices. Well, is Max HBO on demand, or is that two different things? <laughs> HBO Now and HBO Go are different. I don't know, man. It, it's it's insane. Oh my god. Yeah, it's <laughs> Netflix. Hulu used to be like the thing, right? You'd get Netflix, you'd get Hulu, and then you'd have like cable. So now cable is just you know dissipating at a rapid pace. So it's like everybody. You're gonna have Justin Thomas. Like I'm gonna might as well just make a platform for people that just want to watch my videos, which won't be that successful, but it'll be what it is. Pay me more. Yeah, pay me. It's, 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 might as well just be what you said. Service. Just pay me more money. Just like, well, why do we need it? Pay me more money. I got Rick. I got. I get old offices. I got the old uh, episodes of The Office uh, for you. Only the ones where Andy takes over. Only twenty dollars a month. To no, watch it's me n- cut the grass every week. Post Michael Scott <laughs> Office episodes. I'm gonna own. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna yeah, get a monopoly yeah. on those. Oh, it, the, Andy actually got Only better. Those. So it's when what's his name from uh, Black Hat and one that uh, takes over. Yeah. Um, What's his name? But uh, Robert California. Yeah, I have a monopoly. Yeah, I have a monopoly over the Robert <laughs> California episodes of The Office. You can only see them on Top Shelf Fandom. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Give me more money. Yeah. So uh, that's about as bad as this is ever gonna get. So whoa, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> what do you own? Oh boy, everything. Um, yeah. So it's Disney. Pixar is Disney. Marvel Studios is Disney. Starlight, Searchlight, everything. All of these uh, media uh, companies are all conglomerates. They pretty much fight each other, but it is what it is. So they'll 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 seed themselves out in that. Um, so it is what it is. So I thought you uh, you could get it. now you can John you can get everything on HBO um, now that you get on HBO Max. But I guarantee that when you the House of the Dragon comes out, no way will they put that on both. You will have your staple series. That's why they call them HBO. They are establishing a brand. Devoid of the, let me remind you, these are the studios that are making the same things, but they're just like, mm, we want you to pay for both. So like, they're not different, but they're making them different. Yeah. When it comes out, there's no way you'll be able to see like whatever is popular at the time of House of the Dragon on HBO Max and House of the Dragon on HBO regular. They will separate it. Hey, Walt, guess why? 
Go fuck yourself. Yeah, you can watch this episode, episode one, for only $14. Yeah, right now it's the same, though, because my HBO Max password works for my HBO regular password. So it is what it is. But they'll get you as soon as you want something specifically on HBO. And that's just a greater sign that it isn't different. It's not different at all. They just are waiting for something specific to HBO proper to come out. Because right now they're just like, yeah, yeah, it's all the same thing until until we can fuck you over. And then they'll do it. So as soon as Westworld, to check that out, Peter. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What did Peter say? Oh I thought, God. thought you got everything. I yo, you can right now, right now. Uh, it, it goes across. So yeah, Disney is not code word. Justin sucks. That's that's gonna be your uh, your promo code. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Check out HBO Max on We Want More Fucking Money. Um. So yeah. Promo code. I hate you, HBO. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting ridiculous though. So it, it really is. It's really getting bad. So. Um, and I'm really confused about what you can get this on or that on Peacock TV as they're watching Brave New World and they wanted money. So I got an ad blocker, long story short. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, just cancel one, keep the other. Just keep trading on uh, credit cards for your that have like 10 cents on them. That's what I do. Keep doing that out. So uh, Top Shelf Fandom, pay us more money. We'll get all the Robert California office episodes. We'll do, uh, what's another one we could do maybe? My mom, the car, I think. Ooh, really my mother, the car is such a fan. It is <laughs> literally the worst series ever made. The guy's mom dies. She becomes a car. She doesn't get along with that new wife of his so well. And there's quite the conflict. <laughs> my mother, the car, look it up. Bill O'Reilly even said it was shit. And that guy's garbage. So yeah, look into it. Yeah, P guy. Yeah, yeah. No, but Brave New World is very good. And also on Zoom, just so you know, um, which... Johnny, you're saying this isn't accurate for the show because I've only watched the first episode so far. But let's put on what they consider to be for the ending here. Let's put it on the Brave New World glasses. This is an actual part hey. of Zoom, <laughs> right? This is this this is a Brave. I, New... I think this is not real. This is right. Bra- this is the... contacts, dude. I think, but give me a soma, man. <laughs> give me an orange. The brave New AR. It's like a scuba. Dude, I look like Jacques Cousteau in the future. I think they only watched as much as I did. Like they watched the first episode and they're like, oh, maybe uh-huh. it's this. Probably. So, yeah. Probably like, check it out. This for... don't make sense. Yeah, it makes sense to me. It makes sense. I like it. So check it out, guys. Uh, is HBO is phasing really out, really but they're really having really trouble with Roku. Yeah, Roku. That's it. Actually, uh, oh, as we wear these silly glasses, Bruce brings up a, a good point. Damn you, Bruce. Uh, that Roku is in... Um, uh, actual negotiations with HBO that you can't get HBO max on Roku because I don't know who owns Roku at the moment. It's probably fucking Warner brothers or something weird. Um, but yeah, you can't get it on Roku or Amazon yet because they have not agreed upon a price to put it because they're all in conflict. Everybody's taking away things like everything on Netflix. that was Marvel is going over to Disney. Right. And this French fuck was over here with this fucking, uh, you know, is beret. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's all a bunch of uh-huh, bass. You got the cigarette. Oh yes, you went to the HBO Max. You cannot have it. Oh, you Not want it? flapjack. Sorry about, sorry about uh, what is it uh, sorry about Daredevil fuckers. Ho ho. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, yeah. I'm so French. I get my cigarettes in IV form. Yeah. <laughs> Holy girl. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, at least French. They never put up a fight. Um. Anyways, uh, but it is what it is. Yeah, uh, HBO is now cool phasing out because they have trouble with Roku uh, <laughs> and Amazon. But yeah, everybody's gonna con- have a conflict. You're gonna literally get down to like just like this oversaturation of obscure fucking streaming services. Every single channel on cable will become a streaming services for about five years. Then one big company will buy them all up. When Snapchat meets Zoom, those are the fil- yeah. No, it's bad. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll go scuba diving. We'll figure this is it. not something we should have ever found. No, so when I saw this, because I did the update, bad. it should have let me know uh, that, that, yeah, that wasn't going to be advantageous. So, yeah, Raised by the Wolves, we are looking forward to it, but we're also going to hold it accountable. We're going to say, hey, Aaron, why don't you come on this channel um, and, and give a, you know, a two-hour uh, podcast for us. We'll figure it out. Uh, but we have games from New York. I watched the first episode of uh, not New York. Games of New York is good. Games of London's really That's good. A good movie, yeah, it is a good film. I'll stand by that. Games of London has been uh, really good, and uh, Brave New World. I've really liked the first episode, so episodes are coming out on this channel for that. Talking about those, so look forward to that as well as the new Vikings season, the last season, as well as Valhalla, the spinoff. So that should be interesting, as well as me probably having to have somebody other than myself stop me from using. 
gonna get ridiculous. Um, the pig thing when you talk, the ears like yeah, around. it's not even all that accurate. And the bear, oh man, killing me. But thank you guys. Make sure to subscribe. We appreciate you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll keep on uh, treading along here. We'll keep on chugging along. Johnny, thank you for coming on. We'll see you. Yes, sir. Thank we you. were the first, the pioneers, but we weren't scared. We knew that no matter what happened, mother and father would always keep us safe.